Hai Sobat Samuel, berikut ini kami tunjukkan cara berinvestasi menggunakan aplikasi Star Mobile. Caranya sangat praktis dan tentunya mudah. Mari kita simak bersama-sama. Pertama-tama, unduh atau download aplikasi Star pada smartphone Anda. Tentu saja bisa melalui Google Play Store untuk Android dan juga App Store untuk iPhone. Setelah terdownload, buka aplikasi Star dan kemudian klik register online. Untuk saat ini, registrasi online hanya untuk WNI yang sudah memiliki IKTP saja ya. Lalu Sobat Samuel dapat melengkapi data-data pribadi Anda sesuai dengan IKTP tersebut. Dalam proses pembukaan rekening online ini, Sobat Samuel dapat memilih untuk menggunakan rekening dana nasabah atau RDN di BCA atau BRI sesuai dengan rekening bank yang sudah Anda miliki. Untuk pemilik rekening bank lain, Anda dapat membuka rekening Star Samuel Sekuritas melalui website atau offline. Untuk kode referral, Sobat Samuel bisa mengisinya dengan nama teman atau kerabat yang menyarankan aplikasi Star kepada Anda. Kalau tidak ada yang menyarankan atau merefer, kode tersebut dapat dikosongkan saja. Setelah mengisi data nomor telepon dan juga email, kode OTP akan otomatis dikirimkan ke email Anda sehingga Anda perlu memasukkan kode OTP yang tertera pada email tersebut di aplikasi Star. Setelah melakukan verifikasi OTP tersebut, Sobat Samuel dapat melanjutkan mengisi data diri sesuai dengan IKTP. Oh iya, Sobat Samuel yang belum memiliki NPWP masih tetap dapat membuka rekening Star dengan cara mengisinya di kolom NPWP dengan angka 0, yaitu sebanyak 15 kali. Selesai melengkapi data pribadi, pilih upload dokumen di menu bar bawah, kemudian upload foto IKTP, foto Anda bersama IKTP, dan juga foto tanda tangan Anda di atas kertas putih polos ya. Setelah semua data diinput, tunggu proses verifikasi data dan pengaktifan akun serta RDN dengan waktu tunggu maksimal 1 kali 24 jam ya selama hari kerja. Jika waktu tunggu tersebut terlewat, Sobat Samuel dapat mengecek email secara berkala karena kemungkinan ada kekurangan data atau ada kesalahan upload dokumen. Tentunya, Tim Star Samuel Sekuritas akan menghubungi Anda terkait kekurangan data atau ada kesalahan proses melalui email atau telepon. Jika data sudah diverifikasi dan lengkap, registrasi akan diproses yang ditandai dengan adanya email pre-activation, berisikan client code, dan juga password login. Dengan memasukkan keduanya di login akun, Anda sudah bisa melihat market info di aplikasi Star. Namun, untuk mulai melakukan trading, Sobat Samuel harus menunggu proses pembuatan RDN atau rekening dana nasabah. Setelah proses pembuatan RDN selesai, akan ada email masuk. Dan Anda harus transfer ke nomor rekening yang sudah tertera di email ya Sobat Semua, sebagai syarat pengaktifan rekening tersebut. Anda bisa transfer dengan jumlah berapapun, karena kami tidak membatasi jumlah minimal untuk pengaktifan rekeningnya. Setelah deposit berhasil, tunggu email selanjutnya ya untuk mendapatkan PIN trading. Dan setelah mendapatkan PIN trading, maka Sobat Samuel bisa langsung mulai ikut trading di aplikasi Star. Bagaimana? Mudah dan cepat kan? Selamat mulai perjalanan investasi ya Sobat Samuel bersama Star. Jangan lupa ya untuk follow YouTube, Instagram, Clubhouse, dan Telegram kita untuk tidak ketinggalan berbagai update dari Samuel Sekuritas Indonesia. Salam cuan! Halo Sobat-Sobat Samuel, sekarang Sobat Samuel sudah bisa pesan IPO langsung dari aplikasi Star Mobile loh. Bagaimana sih caranya? Yuk simak video tutorial ini. Pertama-tama, masuk ke aplikasi Star Mobile. Lalu, pilih menu Ball dan Post di bawah dan isi PIN Trading. Klik tombol Burger di sisi kiri, lalu pilih menu IPO Dan kemudian, pilih sub menu IPO pada halaman ini, kamu bisa melihat berbagai pilihan saham yang ada dalam proses IPO, mulai dari book building, public offering, dan juga listed. Pada segmen public offering, kamu bisa memilih saham IPO yang dapat dipesan. Pilih salah satu saham IPO yang ingin kamu pesan dan klik order pada saham IPO tersebut. Setelah detailnya terbuka, scroll ke bawah dan klik input IPO. Setelah halaman pernyataan minat pemesanan terbuka, 
klik checkbox pernyataan persetujuan, syarat dan ketentuan, lalu klik setuju dan lanjutkan. Masukkan lot yang ingin dipesan, dan pastikan dana RDN tersedia, lalu klik submit. Bila pemesanan IPO berhasil, kamu akan masuk pada halaman terima kasih yang menandakan bahwa transaksimu sudah selesai. Untuk melihat status pesanan saham IPO pada aplikasi Star Mobile, klik menu Bal dan Post, klik tombol Burger, lalu pilih menu IPO, dan kemudian pilih sub menu IPO status. Kamu dapat cek apakah pemesanan sahammu sudah masuk pada halaman tersebut untuk memastikan keberhasilan transaksimu. Nikmati Iporia dengan Star Mobile. Salam cuan. Okay, so uh, good good afternoon, everybody. For uh, thank you for attending the AKR Corporindo TBK earnings call for the second quarter 2022. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Faras Farhan, a Research Analyst at Atesamo Securitas Indonesia, and I will be the moderator for uh, today's earnings call. So in the call, we already have uh, Akras uh, uh, President Director uh, Pak Haryanto. Good afternoon. Ariando, thank you for your for your attendance. And also we have Akras uh, Director Pak Sures Fembu. Thank you so much for the for the attendance. So for today's uh, earnings call agenda, we will have we will have uh, a, brief, a brief presentation from uh, the AKR team for, from Pak Sures. Uh, so they will they will present uh, AKR's performance and also AKR's operational uh, achievements during the during the first half of 2022, especially since uh, dur during all these. Uh, all these uncertainties around in a macroeconomic era. And also after that, we will have some short comments from Pak Haryanto. And after that, we will move to the Q&A uh, from, from the participants. So uh, just, just, just to give a, a brief background uh, for, for the participants uh, right here, uh, AKR, AKR produces a robust, a robust growth uh, in, in terms of net profit. So in, in standalone uh, second quarter 2022, AKR produces a net profit around five. Uh, 527 billion, which grows 115% year on year, whilst in the first half, AKR posted a 955 billion net profit, which also grew around 73%, 73.6% year on year. So it's, it's actually quite an astounding number. So without further ado, I will just uh, give the spotlight to Pa Sures uh, for the presentation for, for the earnings call. Pa Sures, the time and place is yours. Thank you, Bafaras, and thank you to Samuel Securitas for hosting today's uh, analyst briefing on the performance of AKR Corporindo, TBK, for the six months ended 30th June 2022. I'm very happy to have Paharyanto Adikusmo, our President Director, and one of the uh, majority shareholders of AKR, to join us today in the call to explain about the results and further explained regarding the outlook for the current uh, year. Uh, next slide, uh, uh, Denny. As usual, we would like to uh, remind all participants that uh, the information provided uh, in this analyst call should be read in light with the financial statements which have been filed by AKR Corporindo uh, with the Indonesian Stock Exchange and OJK. The full financial results of the company are available on the company's website www.akr.co.id and also on the uh, stock exchange uh, websites. As usual, we would like to remind all participants that if any information provided in this particular call are subject to disclaimer regarding forward-looking statements as has been shown on the screen currently. So without further ado, I will now hand over to Mr. Haryanto Adikusmo, our CEO, uh, to give you his comments and take on the financial results for the, the six months ended 30th June 2022. Over to you, Paharyanto. Thank you, Shuras. <clears throat> Thank you, Pak Faras, and also uh, Samuel Securitas for uh, arranging this analysis briefing. Uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, attending our analysis briefing for our first half result. I'm happy to uh, announce that we have a very strong uh, financial result in the first six months of 2022. Despite, you know, the volatility uh, of the commodity price, despite the geopolitical uncertainty, 
despite the threat of the inflation as well as the tightening of the monetary policy, our co profit continue to grow strongly. Our first half, our net profit is 955 billion, which is over 70% increase compared to the first six months in 2021. This shows that business model of AKR is very stable, very consistent, and can continue to grow despite whatever the volatility of the price of oil as well as the price of chemicals. This is because that our business model is that we never take risk or take position on the prices of our products, but we always use a formula-based buying and also selling. That's why if we see that since 2019 to this year, uh, on annual basis, AKR profit has grown about two and a half times in this last uh, two years, even though we have a very strong uh, uncertainty because of the pandemic. This again, you know, shows our proven business model of very consistent to deliver performance to our stakeholders. I would like also to uh, mention that this strong performance is supported by the increasing demand of our customers. Whether it's the increasing demand of our petroleum businesses, you know, uh, based on our customer who are in the mining sectors, in the plantation, as well as smelters and industry in Indonesia. And also for the chemicals. As you know, the Indonesian government has been very successful in the downstreaming the mineral business smelters in Indonesia. This not only increase the value addition and the job creation for Indonesia, but this will also increase the demand of chemicals which AKR can also enjoy the increased demand of chemicals in these smelters that are already in production, as well as the smelters that will be in the production in the next two to three years. So we believe that the demand of our products, both petroleum and also chemicals, will continue to grow despite, you know, I mean, the uncertainty of this uh, uh, geopolitical situation. And as you know also that we have this extensive logistic supply chain infrastructure that are supported by our strong IT platform, which can help us in delivering products to our customers on time and as per customer requirement, as well as managing our working capital efficiently. This helps to improve our cash flow. As you can see that at the end of June 2022, our cash has increased from December of 2.5 trillion to about 3.5 trillion. This also shows the strong of our cash flow generation. Also, if you see also that our uh, uh, GP, our special economic zones, uh, industrial and port estate is also giving a lot of growth to our profit. You can see here, that you know, our industrial land rental has increased by 44% year on year compared to last year. And our utilities income also increased by 11%. And we believe that this third quarter, we hope we can book another large customer as a sale of land, which will help us to achieve at least 40 hectares of land sales in this year. This will also contribute significantly to our bottom line at the end of this year. As you can see that with the strong cash flow as of June, our net debt to equity ratio is almost debt free. Uh, you can see that our debt is about two point, our bank debt is about 2.8 trillion and our short term cash flow, uh, our cash, we have about 3.6 uh, trillion. And as you can see, that with the monetization of the land in GP, this will increase further our cash flow going forward. So we believe that uh, with the strong balance sheet, with the low gearing, we are well prepared, you know, to face this uncertainty uh, of the economic situation. And we believe that because of our strong cash flow and the continuation of our cash generation in the future, we are confident to give 25 rupiah of interim dividend 
uh, for this uh, six months performance. We hope that this dividend can be maintained or improved, you know, as we go uh, along during this year. So we believe uh, that by the end of the year, we should be able to grow uh, continuously like what we grew in the first uh, half of this year. We still believe that 60-70% of growth in profit is achievable. This is supported because of the uh, increasing demand of our products by our customers, as well as our continued innovation and productivity that we gain via the upgradation of our IT platform. We believe that also the industrial park will contribute to a significant uh, profit growth throughout this year and in the many years to come. So I think we believe that uh, 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 our strong performance should continue uh, throughout this year and in the many years to come. And, in the, uh, and now I will ask Suresh to explain in more detail of our performance in the first six months of this year. Thank you. And I will stay for the question and answers uh, after this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mahariyanto, for your uh, comments and also the update regarding the performance of AKR, a very strong result indeed during the first six months of 2022, building up on the strong performance that we had over the past three years. So in the next couple of slides, I'll give you a brief overview and also more detailed information about the performance of each segment of business and also explain updates on the GPA project and finally end up with the balance sheet and cash flow information. Next slide. So in terms of profit and loss account, a summary of this, sales and revenue during the first six months recorded 22.1 trillion rupiah, up from 10.7 trillion rupiah in six months of 2021, a strong growth of more than 107%. Similarly, if you look at the gross profit line, AKR reported a, net, a gross profit of 1.61 trillion rupiah during the first six months, higher than 1.09 trillion in the same period in 2021. Similarly, the operating profits of the company also rose to 1.192 trillion rupiah, up from 764 billion rupiah on the strength of not only the higher gross profit, but also good control on our costs, whether it is general administration expenses or selling expenditure. So overall, if you see the operating profit of the company also rose to 1 nearly 1.2 trillion rupiah. As Parianto highlighted, AKR has practically now is a cash, net cash company. That is why the burden of net finance expenses is quite low on the profit and loss account, only 21 billion rupiah booked as interest expenditure compared to 18 billion in the same period last year. AKR also managed its forex very well, so there were no issues regarding any foreign exchange fluctuation. So there were no, no uh, income or gain losses due to Forex. Overall, the profit before uh, tax rose to 1.176 trillion rupiah from 751 billion rupiah last year. And uh, the, the company still has a, a the, you know, tax ratio of about 0.19% uh, to 20%. So overall, before minority interest, the company's profit was 927 billion, but after uh, considering minority interest, the profit attributable to the um, shareholders of the company rose 74% to 955 billion compared to 550 billion last year. You can also see that the company's EBITDA, which reflects the actual cash which has been generated, also rose significantly to more than 1.4 trillion rupiah during the first six months as compared to 965 billion in the previous year. So this is a summary of the profit and loss account. I will go into more detail in the next couple of slides. Next slide. So to break down the revenue of the company, which grew by 107% during the six months of 2022 to 22.1 trillion, the majority of the revenue still is contributed by the petroleum distribution business, which contributed 76% of the revenue. Basic chemical distribution contributes 19% of revenue while manufacturing and logistics are basically only about 2 to 2 percent. But during the first six months, yes, the industrial estate contribution is primarily related to the lease income that we earned and a small land sale. 
but uh, i think we are looking at a much bigger uh, uh, sale happening in the second half of the year so looking at the trading and distribution this is be the main contributor of the growth in revenue and profits during the first 6 months petroleum revenue rose 121% to 16.8 trillion rupees while basic chemical revenue rose 115% to nearly 4.25 trillion rupees so this overall contributes to 119% growth in our trading and distribution business a very strong growth recorded in the first 6 months uh, i will explain also in the next couple of slides the reasons for these next slide and looking at the gross profit breakdown or growth 48% growth in gross profit for a company like akr like varyanto mentioned we do not take positions our our business model is to pass through all the increase in rev, uh, in the selling prices and focus on mar margins so it's more relevant line to look would be the gross profit line where we see a 48% growth in gross profit growing to 1.62 trillion rupees in 6 months of 2022 the breakdown if you see 79% growth in the trading and distribution gross margin rising to 1.37 trillion from 766 billion last year the industrial estate like i said we yeah, are because we booked in the 2021 14 hectare land sales that contributed 275 billion including the lease rental so this year mostly the gross profit has come from the lease rental as far as the logistics and manufacturing also they recorded a strong performance growing nearly 178% to 142 billion so overall trading and distribution and logistics have really done pretty well during the first 6 months we uh, see the outlook for the next 6 months also being strong and despite a lower contribution from the industrial estate Uh, the overall gross margin rose 48 percent. We were the improvement in not only the volumes but also in the absolute margins. Next slide. If you look at the uh, petroleum distribution business, a very uh, strong performance here. Especially not only uh, the volumes have grown 19 percent uh, for the same, considering the same uh, volumes in the period 2021. This is driven not only by the growth. in the mining minerals and related sector which contributes 53% of our total volumes of petroleum sold akr distributes high speed diesel which is blended with p30 uh, uh, and then also sells products like fuel oil and uh, basically a small amount of gasoline gas the contribution of retail is only about 8% but you you know the last one year the average selling price or the price of most of the commodities and energy have risen very sharply to the extent that uh, the mops or the mean of plat singapore even touched 170 dollars a barrel for gas oil but despite uh, such a big uh, increase or fluctuation in prices akr could uh, continue to manage the price situation and our uh, competition did face issues with logistics so we are able to deliver products using our infrastructure to our customers without any supply chain disruption so overall this year we see a strong growth and normally the second half of the year is uh, the year time when most mining companies try to ramp up production of whether you talk about nickel or coal or other products that is why we still believe that the volumes during the year 2022 will be in line with uh, the expectation of the company and we had budgeted a growth of nearly 7 to 8% volume growth so we have seen a 19% growth in the first 6 months a very good indication of things to come next slide so i like i mentioned and pariyando mentioned akr business model has been resilient it's time tested and very disciplined in the sense that whatever the price of oil whether like you saw in 2019 price of oil fell even to minus territory and the now it's gone up to nearly 105 dollars 110 dollars for for crude and mops 170 dollars so the strength of our thing is our discipline and also a business model which enables us to pass through all the costs to our customers using a formula similarly like i mentioned we manage our risks in terms of currency also very well by taking uh, forward contracts or options or managing our forex exposures and at no point in time do we take a risk in terms of building up inventory which can be quite risky so we have a policy of zero net open position so using these three uh, principles and mantras 
AKR has always delivered profit. As you see, in 2018, when oil prices were around $65, $70, we did $712 billion. When oil prices fell, we still could grow to $925 billion. Last year, we delivered $1.1 trillion. And this year, we're expecting to deliver more than 70% growth. So I think this is a good idea as to how AKR operates. Next slide. During the year 2022, the surprise and also a big, uh, also is in terms of the chemical distribution business. This is a business that AKR has been for more than 60 years, 62 years, sell, uh, distributing chemicals, which are used in a variety of industries. These are basic raw materials, which are required by multiple types of industries. Whether you're talking about rayon industry, personal uh, home care industry, uh, general industry, and also as rightly by Indonesia is now developing so many smelters, whether it is bauxite smelters, nickel smelters, copper, and other smelters, which also require a huge amount of chemicals. One of the key chemicals that AKR distributes is among the chloroalkali products is caustic soda liquid. I'll just give you an example. This particular chemical, which is used in variety of industries, including the smelters, is now in short supply. Basically, there's a very tight situation with demand going up globally. And as you know, there are a lot of supply chain disruptions. So this has also caused the price of chemicals to rise significantly. From a situation where caustic soda is to be self-sufficient or exported, now nearly 35 to 40 percent of Indonesia's caustic soda is now being imported. So with all these issues and with a strong support from our principals, AKR continues to deliver a strong growth in the, uh, with this business. This is a commission-based business. So if you see the uh, chart and the right at uh, the bottom, left-hand bottom, you can see the red line, which indicates the selling price of chemical has been rising along with the volume. Selling price of chemical has gone up from 2,900 rupiah to more than 5,150 rupiah per kilo over the past three quarters, three, four quarters. So as a commission uh, distributor, we are able to earn absolute amount of chemical much higher than earlier. So the growth potential is not only from the, the industries earlier served, but also from new demand from smelters, from also additional demand coming in from other industries, including glass, MSG, and others. Paper, for example, is also a big customer of our AKR chemicals. So this year, chemical margins have exceeded expectations, and we truly believe that this will continue over the next couple of uh, quarters because it is not very easy to ramp up production of chemicals. It does take a while in terms of you know uh, principles or our producers to increase capacity, or, while overall the demand in Indonesia has been growing up. So I think this is a view about our chemical business. Next slide. So in terms of cost, AKR always looks at how to improve our efficiencies how to be more innovative and also enable cost effective cost control. So if you look at our costs overall, it's still very much under control uh, given the good performance. Actually, the, as a percentage of sales, the uh, cost has come down to 1.9%, but all items of costs are well under control. Next slide. One important aspect I want to highlight is the strong cash flow that the company has been generating over the past three years. And like I uh, mentioned, the ending cash balance that we carry now is about 3.6 trillion rupiah. This enables us to maintain adequate liquidity and also, you know, the situation where uh, uh, interest rates are going up and all, AKR is in a very good situation. To break down the cash flow, our, we generated an operating cash flow of nearly 2 trillion rupiah during the first six months. Uh, the outflows are shown here, including tax payment of 569 billion. We acquired uh, land in JPE and also infrastructure payment of 162 billion, while capex is moderated. You know, from 2016 till 2020, AKR invested more than 7.5 trillion rupiah in various projects. So now the capex has moderated, and during the first six months, only spent 104 billion. We paid for 336 billion of final dividend to shareholders based on the annual general meeting of shareholders. And you can see that overall a net change in cash is positive, 968 billion. So our cash balance went up from 2.6 trillion to nearly 3.6 trillion rupiah by end of 30th June. 
So this is also a very good indicator of how we have managed our business and how strong our cash position is currently. Next slide. So overall, the consolidated financial position is shown here. I will maybe break this down more easier. The company has a total asset of 27.8 trillion rupiah and total equity of 11.99 trillion, close to 12 trillion rupiah. Next slide. Our overall aspects of the balance sheet. Most important is the trading and distribution company is how well we manage our working capital. As you can see here, AKR uh, working capital requirements are very well uh, managed in the sense that whatever requirement that we have for receivables and inventory is entirely funded by supplier credit. So that's why despite uh, increasing volumes, increasing uh, requirement of working capital, we do not see any major increase in our debt. Mostly it is all funded from supplier credit. Similarly, out of the total assets of 27.8 trillion, nearly 6.7 trillion rupiah is GPA land, which is shown in the various items in the balance sheet. So I uh, consolidated this. Land is ready for sale of nearly 2.2 trillion rupiah. The land that we have leased to Freeport and land that we have reserved for future use of nearly 1.8 trillion rupiah is shown. And land which is still available for development, for which have not done much, is 2.6 trillion. So overall, JPE constitutes a significant portion of JPE of the overall balance sheet of AKR, and this could be a good potential for monetization and creating cash flows going forward. The company has a very strong equity base of nearly 12 trillion uh, rupiah as of 30th June. Next slide. So you can see here one of the important aspects I want to highlight is the significant improvement in our return on equity return on assets have improved, return on equity touched 19.1% as of 30th of June. We are targeting about 16%. We are, are currently running higher than uh, 16%. We are running 19% ROE, especially with a net gearing, which is practically net cash. And with the higher utilization of our assets and also monetization of industrial estate, you will see our return on asset also will bounce back to the level of 7 to 8% in the coming quarters. Overall, a significant improvement in all ratios and a very healthy situation overall in the company's balance sheet. Next slide. So today, I will just briefly give you an update regarding GPA and maybe Paharyanto also will add more information regarding prospects. Next slide. As you know, GPA is one of the largest integrated industrial and port estate which is developed in Grisik, very close to Surabaya, the second largest city in Indonesia. This is a national strategic project and recently been accorded in the month of June 2021 as a special economic zone. It is a project of 3000 hectares of land comprising of 400 hectares of deep sea port integrated with 1800 hectares of industrial estate also with a residential and commercial. But we also provide world class uh, utilities which are also going to create a good recurring income going forward. Next slide. As on date, you can see that we've already acquired more than 1,300 hectares of land and developed more than 1,000 hectares of land which is readily available for sale. We already have high profile clients who have become our tenants, including the largest copper smelter being built. Our deep sea port also is, uh, is being expanded over the last year. Our jetty length is now nearly one kilometer and we are able to accommodate large size ships. And uh, we are also developing an exclusive jetty for the Freeport project. All the utilities for the stage one of the project have already been delivered. And this is helping also for other clients uh, coming in. As I mentioned, GPA has already got a special economic zone status. So this also enables uh, ease of doing business with the administrator's office already in place who can issue all the licenses in one roof. Next slide. So overall, the, this is a summary of GPA over the past uh, four or five years. The cumulative land sales up to 2021 is 83 hectares. We have booked land sale of 3.5 hectares the first uh, six months. And with this new uh, investor having 37 hectares land, uh, which is expected to be booked hopefully in the third quarter or early uh, this uh, half year, you will see that uh, the total land sales will touch 120 hectares. If we can do these land sales of uh, 40 hectares, this will translate to more than 900 to 1 trillion rupiah during the full year. Coupled with that, the lease income from Freeport has also gone up as we have increased the land availability for lay down area and uh, utilities also will continue to grow. So I think GPA land revenue in the second half will reflect 
the 37 hectares of land sales plus increasing lease income. Next slide. In terms of the project uh, progress uh, of uh, the largest copper smelter being built by Freeport uh, in Jipe land, as you know, this is a very, very prestigious project. One of the cornerstone projects of President uh, Djokovi to really you know, bring a lot of value to the country. So this project, which is a $3.5 billion project, uh, comprises of building a copper smelter and a precious metal refinery. As far as GPA is concerned, we have already handed over more than 185 hectares of land uh, for the project, which is generating good lease income, for which we signed an 80-year lease agreement. And uh, basically, we already received the lease rentals for the first five years. We will receive the next five years, uh, maybe by 2023, 24. Similarly, we already signed a 40-year agreement for the exclusive use of the port facilities. In terms of utilities, which creates a recurring income, we already have an agreement signed with PLN for supply of high tension power to GPA, uh, to Freeport, which will be routed through GPA. This agreement was signed with, uh, G with PLN this year. Next slide. So overall, we see that the progress of the project as uh, some courtesy from our uh, uh, the Freeport project team, you can see that a huge amount of activities going on at the site, more than 24,000 piles are being driven into the uh, ground, a lot of equipment and other facilities are being created. So early, by, by end of 2023, this project is, uh, according to Freeport, will be commissioned and will be ready for operation. Next slide. So overall, we see that not only the Freeport smelter project, which is going to have a huge potential for downstream industry, whether we're talking about copper or, or uh, you know, because the waste which is generated by this uh, project of sulfuric acid, more than 2 million metric tons, is a very valuable chemical that will be used in variety of industries. So AKR, the distributor, can also look at that. Similarly, with a lot of other uh, metals, precious metals, including gold, silver, and platinum and other group of metals, JPE will also attract a lot of downstream industry and create an ecosystem for various industries. We already seen a lot of customers now inquiring for land based on this report project. Similarly, we are targeting, in addition to the company we are talking about in the second half of the year, other companies primarily which would need port and other facilities which will create recurring income. So target industries are shown in your slide at this point in time. Next slide. So overall, we truly believe that Jipay as a project uh, over and above the trading and distribution business, which has done pretty well over the past three years based on the logistics and infrastructure. We see that this also is a very big contributor to the gross profit going forward and will be a great a growth driver and generator of uh, cash flow going forward. So we would not need uh, much of debt Similarly, we do not need any right issues or uh, you know, investment from our shareholders. Overall, our uh, estimate is over the next three years, GPA will contribute more than 30 to 35 percent of AKR gross profit. And even this year, the contribution of 15 to 20 percent of gross profit will come from GPA. Next slide. So overall, uh, maybe I will uh, talk about the outlook uh, or maybe ask Varianto to give us take on the outlook and also the guidance for this year. Over to Varianto. Thank you, Suresh. So basically, <clears throat> the outlook of this year, we believe that uh, our trading and distribution will continue uh, to generate a good uh, profit growth for us, as well as our GPA, as I mentioned, that we hope that in the third quarter we can sign up another uh, significant 37 and a half hectare, which means that uh, we will be exceeding the 40 hectare target this year. And also uh, uh, our retail business with uh, BP, our joint venture, is continue to grow. We hope that uh, by the end of this year, we should be able to operate uh, around 40 outlets. And very important is that going forward, you know, we want to move into uh, a clean and renewable energy. Uh, we have already installed solar panel in GPE. Now we are talking with some uh, international uh, solar panel company that will work together with us in installing uh, a rooftop solar panel. So in GPA, we can offer three types of uh, electricity. One, we work with the PLN for the PLN electricity. We also have our own EUPTL to generate the uh, gas fire 
uh, electricity for those customers that needs less carbon footprint. And then thirdly, of course, uh, with this uh, cooperation with international energy company, we should be able also to provide a solar panel electricity for those customers that needs uh, 100% renewable electricity. So this will become a unique uh, offering in GPA that we can offer uh, three types of electricity suitable for each of the company uh, needs. And then secondly, also we are moving together with BP, our partner, British Petroleum, to uh, do the feasibility study in building LNG terminal in GPA. As you know that uh, Java is the biggest demand of uh, gas, but unfortunately, you know, most of our gas are in the eastern part of Indonesia. So bringing it to Java will be the uh, challenge on how our industries in Java, uh, in Java Island, can enjoy a continuous supply of gas at a competitive price. And this is what we are working with BP in GPA uh, on how to help uh, industry in uh, supplying uh, natural gas by bringing the LNG to our side. So we believe that these are also uh, a potential growth for our business of energy in the future. So uh, next slide, please. Yes, so uh, we will give a guidance of uh, 60 to 75 uh, to 70% increase in our profitability this year. And we expect to continue strong growth uh, in the foreseeable future, both in the petroleum as well in the basic chemicals. And we believe that the GPA uh, as well as uh, 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 land sales and the recurring income of GPA will continue to also contribute to our growth. And we believe that uh, this will be sustainable in the next few years as we uh, monetize, you know, the 1,000 uh, 300 hectare uh, or around 1,000 hectare of land that we have acquired that we can monetize in the next few years. I think uh, uh, again with our business model, you know, we have proof that AKR business model is very resilient. We are not impacted by the price of commodity or price of oil going up or down, you know, as long as we can manage our logistic infrastructure efficiently we can uh, 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 maintain our volume growth. We can continue to grow in the future. With this, I think I thank you, and uh, we are looking forward to the question and answers. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Haryanto and Pak Sores, for the wonderful presentation on AKR, and uh, thank you also for the detailed uh, presentation to, to to the participants. So we will. So now we are going to enter the Q and A session. So before I pass it on to the participants, I actually have a couple of questions from my end. Uh, for the for, for the first question, uh, Pak Haryanto and Pak Sures, maybe we both can uh, answer this. Uh, we are seeing that uh, the Fed, the Feds are you know are considering a rate hike around seventy five bps. While while as in Indonesia, uh, they tend to stabilize the. The, the, the Bay rate to around 3.5 percent, rendering uh, our currency is 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 a, is is going to you know depreciate it. Uh, let's say around. So I'm so the, my question is uh, how does how does the the potential of rupiah depreciation affect uh, AKR business in all uh, generally? Okay, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the slide, uh, can you show the slide, uh, yeah. Suresh? So in the slide, we mentioned that there are two things that we need to always uh, watch. Number one is the net open position of our uh, petroleum stock. Yeah, then as, you go to slide number 15. So as we buy and sell using mops, we are uh, already well covered as long as our net open position is always maintained at around zero level. And number two, for the currency, we always buy option or forward. <coughs> or because we have a lot of cash, we buy US dollar directly. So we keep US dollar currency in our book in order that when our payment for LC is due, we have the dollar or the swap for dollar to buy the dollar and pay the LC. And that's the reason why you can see also in our profit and loss, 
uh, you know, the profit and loss on the exchange is very minimal. So we both uh, 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 hedge uh, whether it's the stock, whether it's the uh, foreign exchange. And that's the reason why if you see that since uh, 2019, when the price was uh, uh, $100 and then goes to the 2020 of minus uh, uh, $20 and then goes up again to $60 last year and today $150, $170, our profit continue to rise. So this is also to show that, you know, we are not taking any position both in terms of the price of our product as well as on the foreign exchange. Okay, thank you, Pak Haryanto. Maybe Pak Suresh would like to add something? Yeah, I think uh, regarding your uh, the question on the interest rates going up, uh, with AKR uh, having very minimum amount of debt, that too, most of it is rupiah based debt, yeah. That way, uh, we are not affected, uh, impacted by any adverse changes in the forex, especially the US dollar rupiah uh, exchange rate. And also, if you look at the bonds, also, uh, we just have 37 billion rupiah of rupiah bonds. So we do not have any US dollar denominated bonds in the book of APR. Okay, okay. Thank you, Pak Haryanto and Pak Suresh. So I have uh, what, one last question from, from my end before we pass it on to the participants. Um, given the very strong cash and lower debt that AKR have, uh, what will AKR do uh, by utilizing this cash? So, so you know, you, you, have, you have a very strong cash position right now. Um, what, what does this cash position are you going to utilize for? So I think, <clears throat> of course, if we have an opportunity for expansion, we will do so. Otherwise, we will give back some of the cash to our shareholders. And that's the reason why uh, in the last uh, few years, we always maintain a dividend of at least 50%. This is one of the reasons because we have good cash flow. We don't need uh, a large uh, cash uh, capex. So we just give it back to the shareholders. I think going forward with the monetization of GPA, we may even give it more uh, uh, dividend to our shareholders. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pak Haryanto. Pak Sores, would like to add something? Yeah, I think that's uh, enough. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I think that is all from my end. So now we will be passing on uh, questions to the participants. So uh, for, for those of you who want to ask questions, you can simply uh, use, use the raise hand button and then I will unmute you. And, and, and if you want to ask questions via, via the chat box, you can just type it and I will read it to you. So we have our first, uh, we have our first question right here from Andika Surya Dharma. You can unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, uh, Farash, uh, from Samoa Securitas for having uh, um, Akra here. And thank you for Parianto and Pak Suresh for the insightful presentation. Um, I have a few questions, actually. Uh, firstly, um, sorry if, if, if this has been explained before. I joined a bit late. But um, on the outlook for 2020, 22. I think uh, it's, it's, it's a good year for you guys. Congratulations for the good results. Um, but shifting towards next year, um, we know that the conditions right now of, of the global economy is favorable towards commodities, uh, at least in the midterm. But uh, how do you see next year, uh, entering next year? I mean, uh, you, you explained per earlier that the prices of commodity is not much impact to your business, but more on the volume side. But I just wanted to know the background of uh, supply and demand on, on, on basic chemicals and and um, the mining uh, domestically. Um, that's that's one. And second, secondly, on uh, 2023, I know this year you expect that land sales would would be about around 40 hectares and, and quite confident to achieve that by this year. But um, I think, what about next year? Uh, I believe you have uh, uh, expect to sell about 60 hectares uh, in 2023. Is that still the case? And um, going back, thirdly, uh, going back to uh, your main supplier, Asahi, um, curious to know, uh, what about their their, their views on the uh, on the uh, caustic soda or soda ash business in Indonesia? I heard that, uh, as you mentioned and and you alluded earlier, that 
there are some difficulties in supply chain on, on that section. And uh, of course, right now, they used to provide uh, imports outside, but uh, actually the domestic demand right now is pretty good and they shifted towards uh, uh, domestic market. Uh, uh, is that still the case? And, and, and what is that going forward? How, is, will that condition uh, uh, change? Uh, that's all. <clears throat> Okay, so maybe first of all, I would like to explain that AKR is less concerned about the commodity price. Whether it goes up or it goes down, uh, we are relatively insulated because of our formula-based uh, business model. What is more concerned for us is the demand of our products. So for example, in the petroleum, if we look at the coal, I think the coal price may go down but the coal demand will still be strong at least for another 12 months. I mean, as you know, that uh, you have read that even Europe now, they are reactivating all their power plant based on the coal. Whether it's Italy, especially Italy, whether it's Germany, you know, they are activating again. So the demand of coal will be uh, increased, especially if they don't buy any more gas from uh, Russia. They don't buy any more oil from Russia. What are the alternatives? You know, I mean, uh, it will not be uh, enough just buying gas from United States or from uh, Middle East. So we believe that the demand for coal would still be strong in the next 12 months. The price to us is relevant. As long as the demand is high, the production is high, the demand of petroleum is high. And then secondly, also industry like nickel, Copper, look, when the world goes into recession, what does the government do? They will need to build infrastructure. And if they build infrastructure, what do they need? Of course, they need the uh, minerals, yeah? Especially if they want to build renewable energy. Now Europe are talking about diversifying into renewable energy to speed up the renewable energy building, which means they need more nickel, they need more aluminum, they need more copper, you know, they need more cobalt, which Indonesia have, you know. So, which means that the demand of our uh, minerals will still be relatively good, which means that the Indonesia is more insulated compared to the other economies in the world, including in Southeast Asia or even in compared to Europe. Yeah? So that's why we believe that demand of our uh, petroleum would still increase. The sales of cars, you know, the industry that are expanding, if rupiah depreciate, means Indonesia become more competitive, means industry will grow. So again, they will need more energy. Yeah, and maybe people will want to relocate the factory in Indonesia. Again, they need more energy. So, and then for the chemicals, look at all these uh, 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 smelters, the downstreaming of the minerals that I'm talking about whether it's nickel smelter, whether it's aluminum smelter, whether it's a, a copper smelter, whether it's the tin smelter, this needs a lot of chemicals. And that's the reason why, you know, for example, our own principal, like you see Asahi Glass, they are now thinking of building a second factory because they know that the market growth is so big and the demand is growing very strongly and there is not enough uh, capacity in Indonesia. And the raw material, you know, Indonesia is available. So that's why they want to build a second factory. Yeah, hopefully we can take them into GP, yeah. But let's, that's a, a different topic to discuss. But the demand of chemical will still be increasing, including uh, sulfuric acid, caustic soda, you know. And of course, the industry, yeah. Uh, 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 one of our big customers that's coming is a float glass. They need a lot of soda ash. Again, you know, that's our chemical. So we believe that in the next few years, chemical would still continue to grow double digitally. May not be consistent year by year, but if you take the next five years, definitely the growth of volume in terms of chemical demand in Indonesia will be double digit. And then thirdly, your question regarding the <clears throat> The industrial park, yes, this year we can sell more than 40 hectares. In fact, based on, you know, every week now we have like two or three visits of a potential customer. 
We are confident that next year we should be able to sell more than 60 hectares of land. So much bigger than this year because we got our special economic zone at the end of June last year. So it takes time for people to understand uh, 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 the benefit of special economic zone. It takes time for us also to promote GP as a very competitive industrial park to invest in Indonesia, you know. And it takes time, you know, for people to come and check our infrastructure and utilities that we are building. You know, like I mentioned, now GP can have three types of electricity. I think we are the only industrial park in Indonesia that can provide all the three uh, uh, types of electricity according to each individual company who needs to have a target of a carbon footprint. Yeah? So I think going forward, uh, GP would still be a very important uh, growth factor for us. And I think also GP, uh, not only the land sales, but the recurring income. If we can get this uh, 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 more customer, we believe in the next three to five years, our 500 megawatt EUPTL will be fully consumed. Uh, and then plus, of course, we have uh, 4.6 kilometer of coastal uh, frontage, which means that in our master plan, we can build more than 6,000 meters of jetty. Again, you know, you can imagine how much recurring income from the port services we can get. And then also the water capacity, we have signed already uh, to supply water about 350 liter per second, which we can also supply to our customer. We have uh, this, uh, uh, now we are discussing with this international energy company to install a rooftop at their investment. Uh, and then we can buy at a very low uh, electricity generated from the solar panel, which means that we don't have to invest, but we can have a very low cost, uh, 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 fully uh, renewable electricity. And this again, it's a BOT, like in 20 years time, this will belong to the GP asset. So these are the things that we are now discussing uh, that if we can realize in the next one to two years, this will become a very good recurring business for GP. So uh, overall, I think uh, we are quite optimistic uh, to look at Indonesian economy in the next few years and AKR and GP is in the best position to ride on our uh, national economic growth. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anything else that I missed? Yeah. No, pa, I think that's pretty clear. Thank you very much. Thank you, pa Andika. Okay. Thank you, Andika, for the for the questions. And also, and now we're going to move to the second uh, to the second question. Uh, we have Fida Cornelius. You can unmute, unmute yourself and ask, and ask your question. Hi, Faraz. This is actually Herman. Sorry, I'm using my colleague uh, Ling Sumli. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Faraz and Samuel Skuitas for arranging the call. And hi, Pazuras and Paharyanto. I very con big congratulations to your a strong result. So uh, basically, I, I just have a couple of questions related to the chemical business. Actually, if, if I may ask, uh, can you like giving some uh, explain more about the dynamic of the sector? Actually, uh, how big actually is the market size currently, and how big is your markets market share in this uh, uh, chemical business, particularly on the soda acid, given that the market is uh, in a short page, right? And uh, I just try to understand how how is the dynamics going forward? Is it only like, uh, uh, is it only like Asahi that expanding currently or is there any uh, other principal or competi uh, Asahi competitor that are expanding? That's number one. And the second one is related to the, I just want to clarify basically like a uh, follow up uh, question from Faras related to your cash position understood that your cash is very strong. I just want to make sure what is your priority? I mean, uh, would you uh, uh, prioritize more on the dividend side or would you prioritize more on the uh, pay off your debt and becoming a zero debt company? And uh, probably the, the third question related to your solar panel, uh, perhaps if I may know, 
how big is the capacity and what is your uh, I mean this uh, renewable energy mix uh, target and uh, let's say two to three years down the road thank you Pak. Okay. so thank you Pak Fida so first of all regarding the chemicals yeah of course uh, you know the soda ice uh, position today is very tight but we hope that our principal will be able to improve their uh, production capacity I think uh, a lot of the production in Europe for soda ash was hit because of this energy crisis. You know, the price of energy is so high that, you know, uh, not only they increase the price, they have to reduce the capacity in order to save energy because they could not have enough energy uh, in the factory. So uh, uh, that's why we know, you know, the huge problem in Europe now is actually the energy uh, supply and the reliability of the energy supply. But we hope that uh, this will improve uh, over time. But in the meantime, some of the soda ash market can be replaced by caustic soda. And that's what we are doing. Some cannot, yeah, we still have to supply the soda ash. Those that can be converted into a caustic soda will convert already into caustic soda. And that's why uh, the caustic soda market has gone up not only because of smelter, but because of the demand in industry that needs uh, more caustic soda and that's the reason why our principal is thinking of uh, expanding their capacity by building a second plant because they need to uh, serve the customer and as our customer has grown you know for example like uh, uh, most of this uh, 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 aluminium smelter the alumina smelter yeah i mean they have expanded like in a uh, uh, West Kalimantan, you know, uh, suddenly from 1 million ton and uh, now it's become, uh, you know, uh, more than 2 million ton and then another one in Bintan, another one will be coming in the northern part of West uh, uh, Kalimantan. So all this demand has increased so much and about 12% of their uh, capacity is caustic soda. And then another one is, of course, the nickel smelter. Yeah. The nickel smelter is unique. Not only they need caustic soda, they need also uh, sulfuric acid. They also need molten sulfur because uh, the production of the uh, uh, sulfuric acid is not enough. Uh, so they still need to buy molten sulfur to make it into sulfuric acid. So again, you know, these are the demand that will, uh, the next five years, maybe we'll double the volume of our chemicals uh, business. So that's why we see that the demand is there and it will be permanent. And you know that the more nickel smelter are being built, more heat spile factory are being built. This all needs a lot of chemical. So that's why we are quite confident that the Indonesian economy will still continue to grow despite the threat of recession, of a global recession or global slowdown because of this mineral which need by the government of uh, developed country if they want to help their uh, slowing down economy by building infrastructure, by building uh, renewable energy and so on. And then the secondly, regarding the uh, uh, our cash, uh, yes, we want to use the cash, you know, if we have an opportunity, for example, if we are building uh, uh, LNG terminal, you know, that will cost us a few hundred million dollars. But we believe that we can use some of this uh, cash generation to build this uh, LNG terminal. Yeah, Of course, if there is any uh, good opportunity of acquisition, we will do so. But we are not in a hurry. As you know, that our own organic growth is very strong. If you see, you know, over the last uh, 10 years, we probably grow, you know, uh, like 14-15% uh, on an annual compounded rate basis, which means that even in our own organic growth, we are still growing uh, very rapidly. And then also, uh, uh, if we look at the, the cash, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, in terms of uh, 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 excess cash, as you can see in our own track record, you know, when we have an excess cash, we give more dividend to our uh, shareholder. As you can see in 2018, I think we give even 69% of our dividend. 
in the future we may even give more if we don't have the use of the cash as a dividend to our shareholders. Anything else? Yes. Solar panel. Ah, and then the solar panel, this is also a very exciting thing because we are now talking to a, a very large uh, multinational energy company to install solar panel rooftop. Now, how we do it? We plan to do it with our tenant because the tenant, the factory have many roof. And rather than the roof is not uh, giving the money any return, we can work with them. You know, either we can lease or we can sell uh, electricity at a discount, you know, but we can use the roof to build this uh, electricity panel. And also this electricity, the solar panel, we will not invest. This multinational will invest BOT. 20 years will belong to us, but in the meantime, we can agree on the price of the electricity generated by this uh, solar panel, which means that we can also sell solar panel electricity at a competitive price, which means also this will become a, a strong advantage for GP compared to the other industrial uh, part. Yeah. And the good thing, you know, in solar panel, you need a backup of electricity because, you know, I mean, solar panel will only work maybe five or six hours a day on average because at the, at the time we have cloudy day, we have rainy day, you know. So we need, they need the, our gas fired uh, electricity plant as a backup when they have no sun or during the evening time. So we don't need to invest on the storage uh, which means that our investment cost is also not high. So these are again, uh, we are very excited that we are also moving into a renewable energy that is good for the environment, but more importantly, that economically viable, that economically makes sense, that create more value for our shareholders. So this is a, a very unique position because most of the renewable energy are very expensive to, to build and uh, to operate because you need a backup. And in GP, we have the backup already. And that's the reason why this multinational company also wants to work with, her, with us in uh, developing the solar panel. Uh, okay. Pak thank you, Pak. Just a follow-up, Pak. Just two follow-ups. Uh, I uh, try to get the more detail related to your, your chemical. Uh, looking at your numbers, your first off is about like a four, four to five trillion numbers. So I, I assume that your uh, annual will be like a, that's a double of, but I try to understand the industry, how actually, if you have any color, how big is the market size of the chemical business actually, but is it like 100 trillions or 200 trillion size? Uh, just try to get understanding about the chemical business. And the second one, I mean, when I asked the, the solar panel, just wondering, uh, is there any, any numbers uh, like how big is the capacity that you are aiming? Uh, just because uh, try to get understanding on uh, the ESG initiative front because uh, ESG would love to understand the, the renewable energy mix that you are currently doing. Thank you. I think uh, we believe that by 2024, right, out of the 500 megawatt, of our electricity uh, permit for EUPTL, yeah, uh, government want us to have at least 23% is renewable. So I think we are on track to meet that. So let's say if in the next five years, uh, we can uh, fully utilize uh, 500 megawatt our EUPTL, it means that about 115 megawatt will be generated by the solar panel. And regarding the you, chemical industry, yeah. uh, maybe what I would like to add to what Parianto mentioned is that AKR is focused on basic raw materials, basic chemicals. So also in the basic chemicals, we only deal in about 9 or 10 chemicals, which are bulk, corrosive, liquid bulk or dry bulk, which need uh, logistics and infrastructure, which is specially you know, built and operated for that. So each of the chemicals that AKR is involved, whether it is caustic soda or soda ash or sodium sulfate, sulfuric acid, others. Or molten sulfur. We always sulfur. have a market share ranging from 30% to 60%. So basically, uh, mm. we are growing along with the market. The principals also have a dominant position in the marketplace. They all, uh, you know, most of uh, SAI 
products are uh, manufactured uh, in Indonesia. So these are de delivered by AKR and marketed by AKR and delivered to our customers. Yeah. So that way, I think we they were a dominant position in these nine or ten chemicals. Yeah. We are looking for new opportunities going forward. So basically, uh, all the chemicals we do, it has to be built because that's our competitive advantage. That's where we can mm -hmm. utilize our infrastructure supply chain. That's where the more product we handle, the lower is the cost per unit of this uh, supply chain uh, infrastructure. So this is good. The more business we do, the lower our cost per unit will be because they, are all, they all will be using our current and of course, uh, our future expansion of our logistic infrastructure. Yeah. And uh, your question on the ca capacity, but currently we have more than 820,000 kilometers of tank storage, of which maybe more than uh, 200,000 of that we are utilizing <laughs> for chemicals. But we have uh, been building more storage as and when required. Like recently, we have already added uh, storage in Surabaya port, not in Japan, the regular Tanjung Perak. Uh, for storage of various chemicals, including uh, you know, methanol, including other chemical products. And we also rent these tanks to third parties. So we have enough capacity and also enough land banks. And with uh, JIPE, the port available and the land available there, we have every opportunity to increase capacity as and when required. So capacity is not a constraint for AKR. We have enough land bank and especially with a major project like JIPE, we can add more capacity to meet all the chemical requirements, both for our tenants and also for our customers. Thank you, Bob. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, from Vida, for for the, for the question. And I think because uh, I, I think that I think that question is uh, is going to be our last question for the, for today's uh, event. So I'd like to give give Ron, give a, a big thank you to Pak Haryanto and Pak Sures for uh, conduct for conducting this analyst meeting and for those who have who has already asked a question uh, whether whether from chat box or you have not asked the question you can just send you can just send uh, your questions to our email at reset at and we and we will give your inquiry to to, to the AKR team. So maybe before we before we wrap up this uh, earnings call, maybe from Paharyanto and Pasores would like to give a, a closing remarks. I think uh, AKR is entering into a new expansion phase that are very exciting because we are growing into products uh, that we know, into products that use our infrastructure logistic, into products that will give a competitive advantage compared to our competitor. So I think our trading and distribution business will uh, uh, continue to grow uh, because of uh, the increasing demand and the entering into a new product that uh, uh, synergy with our current uh, customer or current uh, infrastructure logistic. Yeah? And then <coughs> secondly, also we are exciting because of the GPA, you know, not only GP will be able to enjoy uh, the monetization of our land that we have already acquired, but also uh, the recurring income that we are going to enjoy from our tenants. Yeah? And also the excitement of entering into a renewable energy, whether it's gas, whether it's a solar panel, in a, a profitable and sustainable way. I think this is also a very exciting thing because it's always not easy. The question of renewable is how sustainable or how the economic uh, 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 sustainability and hopefully our business model will be able, will enable us to achieve this both uh, environmentally friendly energy as well as the economic sustainability of the project. So I think going forward, uh, 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 we are very optimistic, we are excited, and of course, uh, uh, we want to contribute more to our shareholders as well as our stakeholders, our other stakeholders. Thank you. From my part, I just want to uh, add that Pahriyanto uh, and uh, this also advice regarding improvement of guidance. Uh, we upgraded our guidance uh, after the first quarter results 
uh, increasing our target to 30 to 35 percent of our profit growth in 2022. Uh, very excited to see that within three months the situation has improved and also our performance during the first six months is a good testament to our uh, next increase in guidance. Uh, we have improved the guidance further to 60 to 70 percent, which we feel we are very confident to achieve. Yeah, disclaimers do apply, but uh, overall looking at the explanation by Rianto and also looking at the explanation that we provided to you, we are still very confident that AKR should be able to deliver a profit growth of nearly 60 to 70 percent or translate of nearly 1.8 to 1.9 trillion rupiah for the year 2022. This we will still try to maintain our cash flows and uh, who knows we can also uh, pay a bigger final dividend hopefully next year subject to shareholder approval. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Haryanto and Pak Suresh, for today's uh, analyst briefing. And I also thank you for the participants who, are, who, who has been engaging well and also who has already asked questions uh, through the analyst meeting. And I would like to remind that um, the, for those of you who are, who still want to ask questions, you can send us an email at reset at and we will, ask, we will ask your questions to the AKR team. So that is all from me, uh, from, from us at Samo Securitas. I'm Muhammad Faras Farhan as an actuary analyst and also for the moderator for today's earnings call. We'd we'll like to we'll, we'll like to end this meeting by, say, by saying thank you so much for attending and hope you guys stay safe and also hope, hope that we all given given uh, good health, everybody. So yeah, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Pak Haryapa and Pak Suresh. Uh, Terima kasih Pak Faras. Terima kasih Bapak-Bapak Ibu semua. Salam yes. sehat, sukses selalu. Terima kasih. Thank you so much and, and we'll see you in the next event. Thank you so much everybody. Thank you.